of that surge, so you reached, you know, a few hundred thousand subscribers, you know, but even by, before you had your feature film that you decided to work on, um, how did you maintain that, continue that as bigger properties, traditional people are coming into the space? Well, I mean, I think it's always, you know, you just want to make, you want to make content that people want to watch. And so I would always come at everything I've ever made as would I want to see this and who would want to see this and why, you know, why are we doing this? Because, uh, you know, I feel like there's a couple of issues with putting something out on the internet. There's one, it's if you're not going to have a marketing budget, it's like how does someone discover you? You could have the greatest show in the world, but if you're not properly tagging or creating something that's of interest to people, like why would they find you? How, how can they find you? I mean, mm -hmm. it's like a sea, it's an ocean. So, uh, you know, there's lots of different techniques that you can do. I started by making really topical videos, you know, I'd find something that was going on in the news, you know, like one of my early videos was the sham wow guy, got into some trouble, he beat up a prostitute. And so I did a parody of that called the sham ho. Classic. And it yeah. was, you know, the rest <laughs> is history. <laughs> but no, so, uh, you know, that's a way that, you know, people who are searching for the sham wow guy back then, four years ago, They'd find uh, the Shamwell Ho. They found the case that came up in the, in the search. Yeah, exactly. Shamwell Ho. Oh, I'll go to that. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So it was one of those things. And then what the great thing about YouTube is it's, it's all on demand. So it's not, no one's competing for 7 o'clock on a Monday. So if I do a Shamwell parody and College Humor does and Ray William Johnson does, all our videos are going to be in our related search. So Ray's audience might have come from College Humor or my audience might have come from Ray or whatever. And we're all kind of helping each other in a way that we're not even maybe fully aware of. It's just in the way the algorithm's built on YouTube. So yeah. if you're just making, you know, it's almost like you want to put more things out in the universe that you like that, you know, maybe are of interest to people and then people can stumble upon your stuff and say, oh, that's, I like what you're doing and then become a fan of yours. But doesn't the algorithm always change? I mean, the designs change as we know. Like, how do you keep up with that? And if, if you're always going for timely or, you know, it, you obviously have the people subscribing to you already. So you have that subscriber base. But how do you mix that in with people discovering you at the same time and, and keep their attention? Well, it's tough. I mean, right now it reminds me of when I first started where I, right now, you know, we have a lot of subscribers on Totally Sketch, people that, that watch, but I feel like the site redesign has created it so they don't necessarily get all the content put in front of their face. They have to know to highlight you in their feed and, you know, and look at when you're uploading and know your schedule. And there's a lot of like variables that they have to be familiar with. So it is tough. So it kind of takes you back to making content that will really pop on their timeline and make it so they have to see it because mm -hmm. those are the ones that your audience might actually see. So right now you're like competing to get a hold of the people that want to see you and figure out a way to like yeah, because half the time it them. doesn't even get in their subscriber box. No, and then the same thing with Facebook. What do you think about Kickstarter now? So many, I feel like maybe you could have done something like that. And a lot mm. of people are now creating documentaries like Shay Carl, mm. who raised what, 150,000 on, we're over on Indiegogo. Yeah. Or no, Kick, no, I think he, Indiegogo. In, Indiegogo. And then Hannah Freddie Hart, Wong did Kickstarter. Well, Hannah Hart did 170,000. Now mm. Kickstarter is Freddie Wong. So everyone's taking to these crowdsourcing platforms. Is that something that you would recommend? And, and like, what are your thoughts on how that's impacting uh, this whole industry? I mean, I think, I think it's a double-edged sword. Um, I saw a really funny Onion piece on it, whereas like people are using Kickstarter for just like, <laughs> I, you'd have to see it, but it was just like they're really bad CDs and it was just like <laughs> making fun of like starving artists basically. <laughs> but I, I think it's incredible to empower people like the power of the crowd that's out there yeah, and yeah. saying, hey, this is what I'm doing and you'd be really earnest with them about how you're doing it and what you want to achieve and what they get in response. And so I think it's a perfectly legitimate, great way for people to, to make things that maybe otherwise wouldn't be funded. You know, it's kind of like putting the power in the audience. Would you do that for your next project or no? I, I would consider doing it. Yeah. I think it's just, I wouldn't want to depend on it though. Yeah. That's, That's scary. Because it is. Because it's put like, it out there and you're like, oh, I hope I raise that. Like $200,000. <laughs> I mean, I feel like there's some, on, there's some people there that can do it. Mm. And you're like, God. It's incredible. Good, yeah. Yeah. I give you credit because I would not. You know, in like 24 hours to raise over $150,000. Yeah. It's no, it's, it's insane. And uh, no, I, I feel that. I'm just kind of the pessimistic person where I would, <laughs> I, I don't know if I'm I'd just want neurotic. to throw my eggs I'm a Jew, in that basket. So, you, know. you said you shot a lot on no budget. Mm. So how do you get people to work with you on no budget and still create awesome content? Well, when I was first starting out, because I, you know, now that we've been going for a while, like, you know, we, we pay people that we work with. I mean, it's, you know, it's not, uh, 
It's not completely not starving. Not favors? It's not completely starving anymore. Okay. Um, but when I was first starting, uh, what I could provide, especially for actors, would be something to look good on their reel. Like I would actually shoot something or provide them a character or a role that's something that they could actually use. And that was something we always talked about as something like we're going to make something high quality that's funny that you're going to look great in. And so whether or not people watch it, you know, we don't know. But at the end of the day, you'll still have something cool. So coming at it from that kind of angle as opposed to like, oh, we really got to try and get a lot of views on this. Which I think a lot of people now yeah. who are trying to get into YouTube are all like about how do I get views? And I never approach something of like, how do I get views? It's just, I want to make the best thing possible, but I also want to make it for an audience. So whatever number that audience is, I don't know, but it's just, I'm trying to make things that appeal.